So good evening, everyone. So it is June 20th, and can you believe the school is already out? Something interesting I learned this week was that according to the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, that July through October are the most popular months for birthdays. Why the CDC is tracking that, I don't know, but that's a conspiracy theory for another night. So the purpose of that is to say that right now is the best time to make sure your printer is in top condition because not only are we heading into the busiest of birthday seasons, we're also heading into wedding season as well. Wedding season started a little early for me this year, but it's gonna keep going strong the whole way through. So I do maintenance in my downtime to make sure that whenever crunch time happens, everything is moving as smoothly as possible. So just like checking the fluids and the tire pressure on your car before you get ready to go on a trip, you wanna do the same kind of maintenance that's preventative on your printer. That way, whenever it's crunch time and you're trying to get that last job done before a cake gets picked up or delivered, nothing goes wrong. So tonight, what we're gonna talk about is understanding the inner working mechanics of your edible printer and also how to do some maintenance on it. This is a third part in a three-part series where we've talked about how to Maintain your printer on a weekly basis by using a printer test sheet similar to this. And that's a resource that we provide to you all for free. We've also talked about cleaning the print head. So what we're going to talk about today is actually lifting the hood on the printer, getting inside, and taking a look at some of the things inside. So like Debbie said, my name is Stacy. I'm a cottage food vendor in Jacksonville, Florida. And I like to take things apart and put them back together. And that's how I ended up where I am right now. So let's get started. First thing, mise en place. Make sure you have all the materials that you need, all the tools that you need gathered together first. That way, whenever you dive in, you don't have to stop and break the flow to go get anything. So I always recommend have a sheet tray or a pan or something that's stain resistant when you're working with the ink. That way, if any of the ink falls on it, it doesn't stain it. You also need dry, and potentially wet paper towels. Normally I use kitchen towels, but whenever I'm working with ink, I prefer something disposable so it doesn't create a big stained up mess. Always, always, always nitrile gloves. The ink in icing images, I'm sorry, the food grade dye in icing images ink is extremely potent and uh, I've already gotten myself stained up once this week. So you also need a flashlight that way you have extra light whenever you're working inside the printer. You need cotton swabs. I like to get these in the travel area and I keep these separate in my studio space. That way they don't get mixed up with the ones in the bathroom and I use these for cleaning on occasion. A, some optional things you might need is a pipette or an eyedropper in case you have to wet your waste sponges, but we'll talk about that later on isopropyl alcohol. This is very helpful for cleaning up any stubborn spots of ink, and then also a couple of tweezers. Now, before we get into the meat and the bones of this, don't worry about taking notes because Lori's gonna share a link. This link goes to my website and it has all the resources that we talk about. There's a place you can go rewatch the lives if you want to, and pretty much any resource that we come up with that's suitable to share. I put it up there that way everyone can go back and get to it. There'll also be a cheat sheet that will be shared. That is not the right link. Everything after the question mark should be gone. So not not sure how that happened, but <laughs> we'll anyway. Yeah. Yeah, technical difficulties. That's right. That's why we're doing technical talks now. All right, so uh, I've got a couple of images to show you what we're doing. So what we have up here first is the look of your printer whenever you lift the lid and you take out the cartridges. So the first thing you need to do before you do anything else is remove the cartridges. We've talked about this before, but I'll cover it real quick. You take the cartridges out, and you put them inside your orange clips that you got whenever the cartridges came that will prevent them from leaking everywhere. Next, you want to unplug the printer. 
when you leave the printer in this idle position like this, and you can see how the screen is currently on, on the unit that I recorded. If I leave that printer the way it is for about five or 10 minutes, it will try to go to sleep and it will take this carriage, move it back to the home position, and then it will shut itself off. And if you're in there, it could bump you and you could get injured or you could damage the printer. So the recommendation for that is as soon as you take the cartridges out, unplug the printer. Don't hit the power button, but unplug the printer. So the first thing we're gonna do like always is doing a visual inspection. So I changed the camera angle here a little bit. And what we're gonna look at is this area right here, which is the carriage that the printer head sits in. So if you remember last month, we talked about how to remove the print head. Don't need to do that this time. But the first thing we're gonna do is inspect it. So we're going to inspect first the area where the cartridges plug in. What we're looking for here is any signs of debris. If you have debris in this area, you shouldn't. But in case you do like a, a bit of edible paper that broke off and somehow got caught in there, you wanna get that out of there. That's what the tweezers are for. You also wanna look for pooled ink. If you have any pooled ink, just grab a clean, dry cotton swab and mop it up. You also wanna take a look at the gaskets and you're looking for any signs of damage that could be cracking, wrinkling, uh, parts of it that have gone missing. If you have debris in the area, it could be that that gasket was damaged somehow. And also you want to inspect these gold contacts. It's a little bit hard to see in this photo, but if you look at the underside of the print cartridge, you'll see a set of four gold pads and they meet those pins right there. So if you have any ink on those pins or any kind of debris in that area, it can prevent the cartridge from communicating with the printer. And sometimes when people say, I put in a cartridge and it says, the printer can't see the cartridge, it doesn't recognize it. It could be an issue with one of those pins. If those pins need to be cleaned, that's where the isopropyl alcohol comes in and you take a clean cotton swab put a couple of drops of isopropyl on it, and then use that to gently, very gently brush those pins to get any ink or other residue off of them. This isn't something that you need to soak the cotton swab for, just want it to be very, very lightly dampened. And then once you do that, we're gonna to move to the right and we're going to take a look at this area. So. The printer carriage that we were just looking at is to the left of where this photo is. And what we're going to look at are the waste sponges. The waste sponges are used when you do a printer head cleaning. And especially when you do a deep cleaning, what it does is it jets the ink into these sponges. Now, important thing, when you're looking for the waste sponges, you'll see that there's a sponge to the left that runs underneath the rail where the paper goes. That is not the sponge you're looking for. If you dampen that, it could damage the printer. So stay away from the long one on the left-hand side. What you're really looking for are these two right here. The reason why there's two is there's one for the color and there's one for the black. So what you wanna do is visually inspect it. If it's in good condition, it's going to be shiny. It might look a little bit wet, especially if you just recently used the printer. But if it's dry or it looks dry, that's when you might need to revive the waste sponge. Now, in my normal routine maintenance, I inspect it, but I never revive it because it, in five years and two printers, I've only ever had to do this once, and it was after I neglected my printer for about three weeks when I was away on holiday. So to check the waste sponge, take a clean, dry cotton swab and very lightly dab it in the middle of the sponge. Now, because the, the color sponge has all the colors on it, you don't want to press into it you don't want to roll it around and you don't want to swipe it. 
just very lightly take a cotton swab, dab it in there lightly, pull it out and take a look at it. If it has color on it, that means it's still wet. But if it's dry, that means you need to revive it. Hey, so to, yes. Why would you want to revive that? Like, what do those do? What's the purpose of them? So whenever you do a printer cleaning or a printer deep cleaning, mm -hmm. what it does is it moves these pads up to contact the print head in the carriage, and then it will jet ink through the print head onto this. And if you've ever seen super dry soil during a rainstorm and the water just kind of sheets right off of it, that's because, ironically, something bone dry is unlikely to absorb something. So in that scenario, instead of the water running off the hard soil, what you would end up with is the ink literally spraying all over the place and making a mess on the inside of the printer. Right. And so one of the things that we sometimes will have our customers who have a printer that's either sat or it has like, it's older. It's been, it's, it's over a year. Usually you see it around two years, but sometimes one year they'll dry out just like you said, um, or then start to harden and they can't absorb that ink, just like you had talked about with the soil. Mm -hmm. But what it can do is it can mimic a printhead fog. Yes. So that's one of the things I just kind of wanted to, to throw out there. If you're, you know, if you're having problems with a printhead clog and you can't get it clear and your printer's a little bit older, chances are it could be affected by that. Absolutely. So just as a fun fact, whenever you first turn on your printer, everything just went black on my end. Did we die? I'm here. Did you die? There's a question. Uh, Let's see, I can still, well, we can see your picture, but that may not be you. Lori, is he still up on your end? Yep, you're still up. Okay, it good. Must have just been a glitch then. Mm -hmm. All right. So, fun fact whenever you turn on your printer or right before it starts printing, you hear it making some noises. One of the things that it's doing is it will take the print head over to these waste sponges and it will expel a very tiny amount of ink as a way to prime the print head to, to make sure it's ready to print. So that's what that clunking and clicking sound is that you hear. So in the event that you have to revive a waste sponge, and if you're ever curious or you're not sure, contact the support folks at Icing Images and they can help you troubleshoot that directly. But if you do need to revive it, what you need to do is take a pipette or an eyedropper and distilled water. I do not recommend using water directly from the tap because even though it's municipal water and it's supposed to be clean and sterilized, there have been instances where there is contamination in that water. And at the very least, there could be minerals or other deposits in the water. So just to be safe, use distilled water and what you do is you place one very small drop on the upper third and the lower third of the pad. So it's a total of two drops per pad. And if you see how I have those drops spaced out, they're roughly one third of the way down and then two thirds of the way down. So once you have that done, and oh, also once you revive it, let the water drop sit there for about five minutes before messing with it that way that drop of water can go into the sponge and revive it. So the next thing we wanna do is zoom out a little bit and we wanna take a look at the gears. There's a set of gears on Wait, each- I'm gonna stop you for just one second. Yeah, go ahead. Um, all that information that Stacy just went through about reviving those waste take sponges, it's also on the support page at our web, on our website at icingimages.com. You do have to log in to see it though. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. That's all I had to say. <laughs> yep. Good thing to put in there. All right. So there's two sets of gears. There's one set of gears on the far left side and one set of gears on the far right side. So if you look over here, that should look familiar because that's the waste sponge that we were just looking at. And here's the right side set of gears that I was mentioning. 
you see a silver bar going across and that's what connects to this set of gears over here. So once you locate those gears, we're not gonna do anything with them, but what we are going to do is a visual inspection. Again, you're looking for any debris, bits of edible paper that broke off, a bit of dust, anything like that. And if you do see something in there, just gently brush it out with a cotton swab or you can pull it out with a pair of tweezers. Now, one thing I do wanna mention for sure is that yellow stuff right there is grease and that is supposed to be there. That's put in by the manufacturer to keep the machine lubricated. Do not clean it, do not disturb it. The only time I would ever touch that grease is if I saw a piece of edible paper that had broken off and got caught in it, I would remove it. But definitely, definitely do not clean it off and don't disturb it otherwise. The last thing we're gonna take a look at is the belt and the rail. So again, we're looking at the center of the printer and we're looking at these two pieces right here. The belt at the top is kind of brownish and it has teeth or ridges on it. Just like the gears, we don't wanna to touch it, we don't wanna mess with it, but if you see any debris in there, just gently brush it out. And then the silver piece in the middle, right below the belt, is the rail. When the print head goes back and forth across the page, that is the rail that is guiding it to keep it straight. Just like the belt, just like the gears, we're going to look at it, remove any debris, and other than that, leave it alone. On some model printers, you will see some light white or light yellow grease in there. And that's another thing that you do not want to touch. That grease is there. It's your friend. But if you do see any debris in it, just get it out of there. And then once you're all said and done with that, you just reinstall the print head cartridges. I'm sorry, reinstall the print cartridges. And then always, I recommend doing a test print just to make sure that everything is back in working order. So that's it for maintenance. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is, uh, if you wanna put me back up, I have something I need to share with everybody. So I've been telling you that I've been using Icing Images products and printers for better than five years at this point. And I have always used Icing Images products and gotten the best results. And every time you order cartridges, you always get these orange clips that come with them. And we always recommend that you save these for whenever you're doing your maintenance or refilling your cartridges. But the confession I have to make is I've been using printer cartridges that don't have orange clips anymore. And oh, no. <laughs> it's not because I changed brands, it's because we are crazy excited to announce that Icing Images very soon will be shipping a new design of cartridge. And that's what I'm showing you right here. I've been testing these for about two months. I am floored with the performance of them. There's a lot of features on these new cartridges. So the first thing is you'll notice that this clip is black. If you look at the orange clip, it used to clip in like this. So you'd have to thread it through the clip on the back, do all these other things to get it to fit in there like this. And even though I never had a risk, I'm sorry, I never had a, uh, an occurrence where this plastic clip broke off, but I have heard horror stories. See, I told you, always wear your gloves. <laughs> always wear your gloves. But... I have heard horror stories where people have broken that clip off before, and unfortunately, it, it, it's damaged that can't be repaired. But these new clips clip on in the middle, so it stays away from that entirely. That's one of the things, like when I first pulled these out and I looked at them, I said, whoa, that's, that's a killer feature right there. Another thing that I really like on this is there's a little divot right there behind the plug that you use for refilling. And it's the same size as that plug. So whenever you go to refill it, you can pull that plug out and just pop it into there. And you don't have to worry about having a loose plug 
uh, rolling around on your desk or leaving a drop of ink somewhere. So that, that's hey, a cool little creature feature. Yep, hold on one second. Hey, Lori, can you bring me up too? Because I have the empty cartridge right here. She does. She's going to steal my thunder. <laughs> well, I'm going to show everybody. Whoop, I'm going to show you all what he was talking about. So you can pull, and I got inked today because we're messing in the, room, in the ink room a lot. So I just pulled the plug out, the refill plug. Whoop, see that? And now I'm going to stick it right into that little hole. Mm -hmm. Whoop. And now I don't lose it. Woohoo! Okay, yep. sorry. I'm not stealing your thunder. I'm no. just enforcing some things. No, it's fine. Go ahead. But one of the things that if you look at it from the side, and I have one of my old cartridges here for a comparison, if you look in there, you can see this little piece of plastic right there that you don't see here. And the reason why is the engineers have completely redesigned the internal components of the cartridge. And what you also don't see is that massive sponge that used to take up so much of the cartridge. What you have now is a much smaller sponge in this area here. And the reason why a smaller sponge is cool is a sponge will, believe it or not, hold liquid. It's what it's designed to do. And whenever you get to the end of a cartridge, that sponge would hold some of the ink that you could have been using. So I don't know what the official number is, but you do get more prints per cartridge now because that cart the cartridge sponge is not holding as much ink as it used to. Right. Something else that's really cool is... Hey, stop there. Stop there. Hold on. Lori, can it. you bring me back up? Because I can hold... I have empty things. All right. Yeah, just keep me up right now, Lori, if you don't mind. Uh, Lori's our, our master behind the scenes. So this is... There we go. This is the new cartridge. This is the old cartridge. And you can see the sponge size difference um, on the new one. There's a lot more ink in here and a smaller sponge. Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead. Um, go ahead and continue. Nope, I love it. Yeah. Another thing that's been updated is the venting system, which is essentially how the cartridge breathes. Because it, anything that was completely sealed, as the ink would come out of it, on occasion, air pressure or negative air pressure specifically would build up in here, and you'd have to vent, or some people call it burp the cartridge. You don't have to do that anymore. The venting system has been completely redesigned, so it's now a ventless or a burpless cartridge, which is really, really cool. Now, yep. here is one of the questions that we've been getting, and you're going to love it. If you already have a refill kit, keep it. The formulation of the food-based, food-grade dyes that are in Icing Images Inc has not changed. The magenta still magenta, cyan is cyan, yellow is yellow, black is black, PG black is black. So if you have existing cartridges, you can mix and match them. So let's say that you tend to do a lot of prints with yellow in it. So your yellow always dies first. You can get the new style yellow Mix it with your old style cartridges and nothing changes. Absolutely no changes. This is not one of those scenarios where you have to throw everything out and start over. Nope, not going to change. Your refill kits that you've had are going to continue working just like they always have. Your print head cleaning kit that we talked about last month will also work with these cartridges because, again, nothing on the mechanical side of the printer itself has changed. It's just the design of the cartridge itself and the orange clip that's now black. And if you listened to me before, you've heard me say scribble and Sharpie on your clip so you know which color is which so you don't accidentally turn your yellow pink. You can do the same thing on the end of the cartridge. The only difference is grab a silver or a white Sharpie or paint pen and you can do the exact same thing. So you see I have all my other clips from the other cartridges that are currently in my machine. 
That way I don't have to wonder which one goes with which. So that pretty much sums up everything I had to say about the new cartridges. Did I miss anything? Um, so where are you marking the black ones now? Right on the very end here. Oh, you're using a white marker? Mm-hmm. Okay, and if you don't have a white marker, um, I'm wondering, hold on, I got a Sharpie. I got a black. And let's see if I can get it to focus. Does see? it show up? Yeah, it's showing up. I can see the line when I... Ah, good. So there you go. You have better eyes than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because not everybody has a white marker. You know, um, and you can also throw a little sticker around there if you want to and, and just write on it as well. And hmm, I'm wondering something. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, I don't know that I would do that. Okay, something else that's very important with these, and we are putting together all the documentation. That's what we're doing right now on these cartridges. We've had a lot of success with everybody who's testing them. Um, we find that we see fewer clogs because it's ventless, um, it acts, automatically feeds that air through them. But what's important is putting these, um, these clips on properly. So I'm gonna see if I can show this to you. Um, boo -boo -boo, let's see. So I yeah, see I got ink today because I don't ever wear gloves. <laughs> okay, so you see, I gotta get the right angle, all right. Right up in here, you can see kind of how it goes down. I'm going to turn it sideways, how it goes down here. That is actually where the clip grabs on. So you're literally clipping it on and you're squeezing. Whoa, it helps to turn the cartridge the right way and <laughs> clipping it down. <laughs> What's important is that you follow this motion. Okay and not try to pull it off. Because if you can see in here, let's see. Ooh, boo, boo. Gotta get the angle. Let's try try putting your hand behind the cartridge. Yeah, trying to get, okay, there you go. You can see those little holes through there. There's little tiny nib, nibs, I guess, or, or areas that just grab on and latch that, that, uh, that uh, cover right in there. So. It's very easy to do, but we just don't want you yanking it out of there. Mm -hmm. It just it's boom, boom, boom. Easy, easy peasy. Um, but yes, we've had a lot of success with them. Um, there is more usable ink in them, which we like. Um, and um, it's really that awesome. Yep. Um, all right, yeah. So any questions first about these the new cartridges? What's important to know is that you may get if you order a set of cartridges starting in a few weeks, you may see some mixture in there and it's okay to mix the two different style cartridges. It's just absolutely fine to do that. Um, and eventually we'll switch totally over um, to one style cartridge, but we're excited about these. Absolutely. So let us know if you have any questions about them. The price is still the same. It costs us a little bit more, but we are not passing that cost on to you at all. Um, so, um, Yippee, <laughs> you know, you're going to see a lot fewer problems with your um, clogging because sometimes it's flow. Um, a lot of times it's flow. You, you, people would tell you vent the cartridge or burp, as he said, and that kind of just goes away. So we really, really like that. Mm -hmm. All right. We are going to segue into Q&A. So this is your chance to ask Stacy and or myself any questions you may have. Um, we did have one question. I'm going to start to read it. We have only a few questions right now, but please start typing those questions in so that we can help you along. All right, because now we have three questions. Good. Um, Katrina says she just purchased a brand new Epson EcoTank printer. Can she use edible ink and print edible images? Now, I answered that, but I want to hear what you have to say. I'm curious. <laughs> so here is the big, big, big question. Mm -hmm. At any point, has that printer had regular printer ink in it? If the answer is yes, then the plumbing 
inside the printer and the other mechanics inside the printer are contaminated and it is not safe to use edible ink in it. Correct. Now, there is a reason why we do not use the Epson printers. Um, and the reason is that removable print head um, that we've talked about previously, Epson doesn't have it. So if you get a clog in your printer, it's very difficult to get it out. And if you can't get it out, you're out the printer. That's okay. it. Um, and so we tend to stay away from those eco tanks. Um, they're great in theory. Canon does have its own version that is not food safe off the shelf um, because they're, you know, we, we break things apart. Um, and when we broke open the Canon, um, it's called a mega tank, it was not food safe, even though there are companies that sell them as edible printers. If you take the printer or the print head and you open it up, um, there, it, there's ink in it. You cannot use that printer off the shelf. So um, love the idea of the eco tanks. I do know people who use them, um, but when it gets to that clog, that's it. Mm -hmm. So I hope we answered that. If not, ask me for questions. Um, Carol, Stacy, how far ahead can you print Im print images? Uh, wait, how far ahead can I print my images? Can I start printing and decorating, decorate later in October? Is that what it says? Yeah, October. So I would not go that far away. What I always... You can print the image yeah. ahead of time. That's fine. Yeah. Right, go ahead. So this is one of the foil packs that the, uh, the premium icing sheets come in. And what I did is I saved these. So I put like a piece of blue tape or something on it so I don't pick it up thinking that it's a full pack. But what I do with this is once I'm done printing, I put my print in here once it's sat out for a minute or two to dry. I put it in here and I use that to keep it safe because the enemy of any edible medium is going to be humidity, which for folks in some climates, that's not big of an issue. For me here in the southeast, that is an issue. So as soon as it's printed and dried, I immediately put it in a foil pack to keep it dry. Now, I have successfully printed something and kept it for about two weeks or so and been able to apply it to the cake or other confection that I'm making and not had any issue with it. And for reference, let's see here. This... This is a printer test sheet that I printed about two months ago. And you can see that there's a little bit of bleeding right there from the cyan, just wicking its way through the material. And it's one of those things. Can you do it? Yes. Should you do it? Probably not. Because yeah. if you want that image to be as crisp as possible, you want it to be as fresh as possible. So that's the reason why I would say like me personally, I do my printing anywhere from two days to seven days ahead. Because sometimes if I have multiple orders, I do all my printing and all my cutting at once. And then I put them in the foil pack. That way it's ready to go when it's time to decorate. But, but. <laughs> we recommend if you can avoid printing right before it's due, especially as it gets close to a weekend, um, Printing ahead of time is a good idea because waiting to the last minute, especially if you haven't used your printer regularly, mm -hmm. can lead to a back against the wall situation. Yes. Um, so um, we just, we recommend print, printing actually a few days ahead. But Stacey, you're a hundred percent right. If you print, I mean, the image itself will last till October, um, but you may get some of that hazing and you won't have a, best quality um, and and that's in a very humid situation now when you're in a standard like a normal situation um, or in a drier uh, environment you're not going to see that hazing as much right uh, so that's what he was talking about with the humidity the icing sheet holds up fine in all those situations but the ink it, it, it it's getting um, water in it and so you know, it is, it is uh, spreading that image a little bit. So that's, that's cool. What are you doing? Making no, a mess. Check out what's behind him. 
I love doing that with people in life. Okay. Um, let's see. We had another question, unless you've got something to add. Do you? So here's a good example. Mm -hmm. This is a, a demo piece that I was, well, I shouldn't say a demo, but a test piece I was doing for a cake I made uh, a week ago. Mm -hmm. And this is on, is that Smartsheet or Wafer? No, that's Wafer. So I printed this on Wafer and you can see some very fine filigree style design there. And this is probably three weeks old at this point, and it has not started hazing or ghosting or doing anything like that. And that's because it's a finer detail. If it was an image that had a lot of saturation, like a photo for a face cake or a full color graphic, those are the images that tend to have that ghosting or hazing effect more because there's high humidity areas. Exactly. More ink plus humidity equals that spreading effect. Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, Sue, wait. Okay, that was. Sue asks, speaking of going on the road trip, we are going on vacation for two weeks. Is there anything I can do proactively to minimize the impact of two weeks without use? 100%. And this is a... This is a great scenario to use one of the printer test sheets that we talked about before. And if you go to that link that Lori shared earlier, you can download a copy of this for free. And what I would recommend is before you go on your trip, print this and stick it in the area up here on the top of the printer. That way you have a reference sheet. And then what I would do is get two garbage bags like the large, hefty style. We have, do you know what we have? Oh, we do. I, we and do. I know why you have it, but I'm getting to it. Okay. <laughs> so the first thing is this is a product that Icing Images started carrying it because it has worked so well for me. This is straight out of the 80s. It's a printer cover. Woohoo! Just like dad used to have. But anytime that I'm not using my printer or using it as a demonstration piece, I put this cover on top of it. And what this does is it reduces the amount of airflow around the printer because what causes drying? Circulation of air. So by putting that dust cover over it, it reduces most of that airflow around it and that helps prevent it from drying up. Now, in your situation where you're going on a trip for two weeks, I would still use this dust cover, which is available at icingimages.com, but I would get two large garbage bags. Open up one, set it down, put your printer in it, fold it up over the top, take it, the other bag, put it over the top, and then tuck it underneath. And what you're trying to do is create a sealed environment so the humidity that's inside the printer stays as constant as possible. When you come back from your trip, first of all, welcome back. Second of all, did you really have to come back? That's how I always feel. But take the bags off your printer, power it up, and then the first thing you should do is run another printer test sheet. And then what you do is you take that one that you stored here and compare the two. Do I have any streaking? Are all my screening or my fading looking correct? Are all my colors coming through correctly? Do I have any bleeding, anything like that? And if the first print that comes out looks a little funky, don't feel bad. That's because of the printer just sitting idle and not being used. We always recommend for the cartridge-based printers to run at least one colorful photo per week, preferably more, but at least one per week. And that's what this was designed for, to get that nice balance of getting a, a nice rich color print and using as little ink as possible so you're reducing your waste. But like I was saying, if that first print comes out and it looks a little funky, that's okay. Run mm -hmm. a second one and then compare that second one. Like there have been occasions where I've had to leave for a couple of weeks. I might've had to print two or three check sheets before everything started flowing the way it was supposed to. But ultimately I've not had any issues with this printer in almost two years by maintaining it that way. Gotcha. 
Now that recommendation for like once a week, once every week to two weeks, um, better once a week um, yeah. is with the Icing Images inks. Um, other brands, if you're using another brand and you're watching this, they may have different criteria, but that's ours. Um, so, and that, that seems to work really well.